Dan, uh, both your role at King's and your, your current role is um, a high profile and they're stressful and they're 24-7 you know, jobs. The, 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 the pressure is never off. What personal strategies do you employ to ensure that you um, stay focused, you stay healthy, um, not only for the organization's success, but for your own personal well-being? Mm. Look, it's, it's easy with the, the disruption and all the, the change going on to lose sight. Um, and so if I, if I talk initially about the organization, so it's easy to lose sight of what we're really about. Um, and, and look, probably the, there's no greater example than that in the last three years. You know, there's been every opportunity for us to be distracted from our core purpose. So I, I do some really, some really basic um, personal things. So I have a copy of our school vision uh, and it sits on my desk. And so what I'm able to do is I'm dealing with things that really distract from the key purposes. I'm able to center myself in what we're really about. And that's, you know, developing young men of good character who are pursuing personal excellence, who, who are gonna flourish in life. And it's really important for me to draw myself back to that. And there are two other things that probably go hand in hand with that. I, I received a letter when I left King's uh, three and a half years ago from a student that I taught there um, quite a few years prior. Uh, and it's the most, it was the most emotional letter that I've ever received. And, and it took me about, well, it took me about six months to get through it without crying. Uh, and he was just writing about the difference that I'd made in his life. And so that letter sits in my top drawer. Uh, and, and I just occasionally, and I'm getting a bit emotional now, I occasionally go in there and just read that letter and go, that's what, that's what it's all about. Uh, and the third thing is actually, I'm just going to shift my camera here. Mm. On my wall, you'll be able to see my Liverpool flag. All right, so <laughs> All right. the Liverpool flag is there for two reasons. One, I am an absolute mad uh, <laughs> Liverpool fan, and they are the finest football side in Europe. Of that, there is no doubt. Um, but the real, the real reason why it's there is is not to antagonise the Manchester United fans. It's, <laughs> it's basically when I was ten years old, uh, my dream was to play professional football for Liverpool, and I did everything I could to achieve that and fell very, very short. <laughs> but I leave the flag there to remind me every morning when I walk in that actually that's my business. Uh, it's to help young men dream and then help them facilitate their dreams. And so those those little triggers for me make actually quite a big difference. They, they help me stay centered. Um, and then there are some, I guess, some more sort of pragmatic things. So I've got a copy of our annual plan. I commit to going through that every every month. Uh, and I'm looking at those strategic pillars and make sure that we're not deviating from those overarching goals uh, and we're not getting lost in the weeds, but also revising the strategy, making sure that you know it doesn't need tweaking or overhauling.